Kaya. Whoa. <laughs> it's totally like Clover. So far, all I've shown you guys is one grad student in one field, in one lab, talking about science. But I think it's time that that changes. So today is the first of a new series where I take my camera and I follow around other graduate students and talk to them about what they're doing in their labs. So today, let's go on a very first field trip to visit my collaborator and friend, Sasha. Why are we dressed so funny? Uh, because we want to restrict the number of particles that go into that clean room area. It's basically anything on your clothes, uh, like lint, will be giant in comparison to the things that we're making in there. So we're making things that are um, smaller than your hair. So your hair is 80 microns, we're making things that are like one or two microns, so basically like 100 times smaller than the width of one of your hairs. So if you get a hair on your device, you're going to be really sad. It's just going to be like this giant hair. I'm Sasha Dennison. I'm a fourth year PhD student. Um, I, my home department is bioengineering, but I work with Beth Pruitt, who is in mechanical engineering. Our lab is interested in studying cell biomechanics and broadly, you know, mechanobiology, which is this field that is interested in seeing how cells respond to their environment in terms of producing forces. So what we're interested in is how uh, do the cells produce this uh, force that they need to do in the in the body and um, looking at it single cell. So what we're gonna make today are these hydrogels, which is basically a fancy word for jello, um, which has a protein pattern which is shown in green. And then um, that protein pattern is there so that cells adhere to the hydrogel just in specific areas. And then you can also see these red dots and so our hydrogel will also have little markers in it so that we know when the cell moves the gel um, that the little markers move too. These are the rubber stamps that have um, micron sized features and basically just ink the stamp with protein. Like if you've ever you know, played with stamps as a kid, right? You put the stamp in some ink. And so I basically inked the stamp with protein. Um, so that's step one. And what we're gonna do is take that off. Um, then we're gonna rinse it once. And then we're gonna dry it. And then it'll be ready for the stamping part. <laughs> we're gonna dry the stamps by vacuuming around the stamp. And then we're going to make sure that they're really dry by putting an inert gas on top and kind of... It's like the hair dryer for the stamp. So I just... This is called aspirating, which I think is one of those funny words. It's like, why don't people just say take liquid off? And I'm trying not to touch the middle of the stamp because that's where the features are. That's where the pattern is. And then just aim there and you can kind of see it dry it's it looks kind of like a coffee you know stain drying oh, yeah. yeah I don't know if you can see that I can actually on the camera which is that's crazy. awesome we're gonna take our dry stamps and we're just gonna Put them here for a second. And then what we're gonna do is take a piece of glass, so this is what this little line is, um, and we're gonna treat it so that it becomes water-loving, hydrophilic, and proteins, because they're usually in water, are also surrounded by a hydrophilic coating. Making this hydrophilic, will, or water-loving, will allow us to get the protein to adhere to the glass. So that's what we're trying to get, like little islands of protein that is our stamp on the glass. So what we're gonna do is only the top of these is activated, right? So we're just gonna pick up a cover slip. We're gonna take one of our patterns and we're gonna set it down. And then we're gonna put a little weight on top and start the timer. We're going to do that for all of our devices. So five minutes have passed and another thing I've done is like label this dish that I'm going to transfer these cover slips to. Um, so basically what you do is take the weight off and then you 
can see kind of where the border is still attached, but you see the square? The reason it looks like it's not attached to the glass is because they're like little raised grooves there. Um, so hopefully the tops of those grooves did attach or contact. I just lift it off, put it in there. Uh, and then after we have this piece of glass with protein, um, we're actually going to take the gel and we're going to make mix up all the um, ingredients of the hydrogel and then put the protein covered glass on top. And as the gel is solidifying, um, it will actually uh, take up these protein islands. I came in here and mixed the gel solution beforehand. Okay. Um, and I put it in this chamber, which is uh, called a desiccator uh, or a degas degassing chamber. So basically it just has a valve and then it's connected to the house vacuum. And then when I pull the valve slowly, um, then the vacuum gets, you know, it used to be in the vacuum and now it's just Overizing. And the reason we degas is because if any air gets into the gel while it's polarizing, it will stop the polarization process. So we want to get rid of as much air as we can. Can you tell me what polymerization is? Ah, uh, yeah. That's when the gel is jelly. Okay. When it's going from a liquid to a solid. And here's where I mix it very well without introducing bubbles. You can see it's pink because it has the beads. Oh, right, the red beads? Yeah. So you can see it's still a liquid. And then we're going to take our little cover slip that we stamped. And we're going to flip it around and put it on top of the gel. Like that. Then we wait for it to uh, gel. You can totally see it's a liquid. Okay. And then in five minutes, can we poke it? Yeah, and see we're that gonna it's poke not liquid. It. So it's been around five minutes, and you can see that the gel has solidified. Um, it's become a solid, not a liquid anymore. You can see. You can even see that it took on the shape of its container. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's like flubber. Hiya. Whoa. <laughs> it's totally like clover. And at the end, we'll be left with um, a gel and protein patterns on top. Um, and again, this gel has little red beads so it can track its motion. Uh -huh. Are you ready? I'm ready. So exciting. Ooh. So these, and you can see the resolution for these guys, like with the stamping, is pretty acceptable. So we're gonna get little heart muscle cells to bind, hopefully just one cell. You can see there's some defects here, but there's just so many of these patterns on the glass. So there's plenty that are. There's plenty. Uh, and then we can switch to a different color. You can see the beads. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> little overexposed. Yeah. So you can even see that the beads cluster a little bit in these regions where we had the protein patterns. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I can under. Yeah, can we bring the brightness down a little bit? Oh yeah, but now we can see that they're beads. Yeah, you can see that they're beads. They're very... They're tiny beads. Very tiny, yeah. You can, you can see when I focus through... Yeah, that they're oh, just yeah. tiny beads. So from this point, uh, if you wanted to culture cells on this, then you would basically wash it a lot and then uh, put your cell suspension on top and the cells will bind down to the, um, the protein and they'll adhere to it. And then you can actually use a microscope to look at the cells and look at the beads um, and do some uh, experiments looking at the 
cells when they're actually tugging on the substrate and then get rid of the cells and look at the substrate as it was originally and using those two images you can get a readout of the force that was produced by the cells. Yeah, so we'll be watching these beads move and you might be saying, well, I can't resolve each single bead. Right. But that's not actually what we care about. We want to look at textures. So it's basically, we're going to use a computer program that will look at the texture here um, and then match it to another image and try to follow that texture. So it's, it's almost like we're trying to create like you know, animal fur or something where there's like a mm. pattern to it that is very like random so that you can say yes this is like this particular area because this other area doesn't have this one strand going this way, you know. Um, so that's what we're doing. Cool. Yay, awesome. it worked. Yay. <laughs> cool. I kind of in high school just really liked biology and uh, really liked math and physics and and I thought, oh, I want to do engineering, but I was always inspired by biology. So then I actually picked my major before really knowing what it was all about. Um, and then I started working in a couple of labs um, as an undergraduate with Amy Herr, and then also in some summer internships. And I think that's when I was like, oh, I actually really enjoy this field. So I kind of chose it on a whim and then um, kept going with it because I liked the mentors that I had and the projects. So, yeah.